Hey everyone, it's Admiral Seabass. Welcome to my war room in Indianapolis, Indiana, and welcome to Operation Killing Fields. I can't even tell you how excited I am and what a joy it is to be playing in a YouTube war of Global War 1985. Most of you who know me, follow my channel, know that I put a lot of content out of me playing Global War 36, Axis Allies 1940. And this was four or five years ago. And then some guy named Doug from Historical Board Gaming snatched me up and asked me to design a game. And I've been doing that the last four and a half years. And so to actually be playing this game um, in a YouTube war, it's special. So um, yeah, happy to be back and making content. So anyway, this is uh, I'll be playing Soviet Far East Command. And this is their turn one, or what we call turn 1.1. Um, since this scenario one here is uh, a three-player game, then uh, you'll hear me say, like, turn 1.1, turn 2.1, and the point one indicates it's the Soviet Far East Command. Pacific Command will be the point two, so uh, next will be Captain G. He'll be doing uh, U.S. Pacific Command, turn 1.2, and then uh, Ozark Outpost will be doing China, and he'll be doing... Uh, turn 1.3, and I've gotten to know both of those guys over the last year. Uh, they both played this game down at Twisted Lords Con in uh, Oklahoma, and I um, uh, got to know them both. Super awesome, great guys. <laughs> I talk to both of them almost every day now, and uh, yeah, happy to be playing this game with them and that, that they've picked it up. So, all right. Uh, so, let's get into the turn. So, the first thing that the Soviet player does on turn one is a random event. And uh, by mutual consent, we've agreed <clears throat> to play the Bamboo Curtain random event. So, I've set that up here. And uh, that gets things going here in Cambodia. Uh, this is the blow-up box on the bottom right corner of the map, by the way. Uh, so, I added a minor air base, a minor army base, and uh, a SAM unit uh, to Cambodia. And you see here, the SAM unit is... Doug just put these out at HBG. It's the S75 uh, SAM, and I got those painted up in Soviet minor color. I'll also be using them for China SAM. So um, basically what happens now is um, U.S. Pacific Command has to attempt to place an insurgent here into Cambodia. If that fails, then Cambodia will turn into a Soviet Far East Command land zone, and then I can start using it. If he places the insurgent there, then I have to, on my 2.1 turn, have to attempt to place a counter-insurgency there. If that counter-insurgency succeeds, then I also get Cambodia. But if that counter-insurgency fails, then Cambodia will go to Pacific Command, and then Far East Command will get Vietnam. That will align, Vietnam will then align to Far East Command. So it'll be exciting to see how that plays out over the next couple of turns that you're going to watch here in this game. Uh, okay, so that's the random event, and then, um, I'm not, uh, I don't have any global operations or anything, but the next thing I have to do is tech. Before I do that, just let me show you my setup here in my war room. Um, uh, that's a pretty good view there of my setup. You can see over here we've got the U.S. Pacific Command, and we are playing with a couple of expansions that we are still testing. The base game is done. Uh, but we love this game so much, and we, you know, we we paired the base game back just so it could be playable. But we like a lot of the complexity um, to add on to it with some of the expansions and the depth that that adds. So we're playing with naval aviation, ASW operations, battleships, battle cruisers, and ground attack aircraft. So you can see all that represented pretty well here um, in the the Pacific Command's opening setup. Um, and then you see down here, um, Soviets have a TU-142 Bear Foxtrot down here, ASW, a Sub Hunter, etc. So, yeah, you'll you'll see you'll see all this in action uh, over the course of the game. So let's go ahead and do tech. Um, I'm gonna go for um, four tech. So in scenario one, the Soviet Far East Command and the U.S. Pacific Command get three free tech dice representing they're global uh, major faction partners that have major army bases that produce tech dice. So, and then they get one tech dice for each of their major army bases. So, um, Soviet Far East Command has one major army base plus the three free ones. 
And I'm going for uh, AMD, number two, uh, Computers, number three, uh, Chemical Warfare Doctrine, number 10, and then 13 is Advanced Manufacturing. And I love this method of rolling that uh, Cade, uh, Board Gaming Bro, taught all of us, where you just you put the number of the tech up here, and then the you color code that to the dice you're rolling, and then you interpret the results. So let's see how the Soviets can do on tech here in turn one. Uh, looks like pretty good. Uh, let's see. AMD is uh, a 10. That's a success. Computers, unfortunately, is a 7. That's a fail, but the other two were successes as well because I rolled 10s on all of these dice. So I hit everything but computers. So we'll come over here to my chart. So AMD is complete. Good way to start the game. Chem Warfare goes to stage 2 because I start at stage 1. And Advanced Manufacturing, we will go to stage 1. So... Now that I have completed chem stage two, what that means is I can use chemical attacks in two land zones now instead of one. And so you see over here on my dashboard, I start with the one chemical marker reflecting that I can make one chemical attack and now I can do two. So I will put that there like that. Okay, so let's continue with the turn. Good start for Mother Russia. And on the tech, so now I'm not, uh, I have 10 IPP to spend. I'm spending exactly zero of it. So then let's get into combat movement. Or no, no, there is no combat movement. Let's get into non-combat movement. And let's go like, let's come down here and see if we can't get a decent angle here. I'll show everything. You know, I, th I, I tested this before I started, and I, I think I just kind of settled on this angle down here as being the best and lets you see everything that I'm going to do. So, I've got all my moves written out, which I find really helps reduce mistakes in particular. So, I'm just going to go through my list. Um, first thing I'm going to do, I have a sea lift embarkation capacity of 2. Jeez, I can embark up to two units, land units, uh, in uh, sea lift movement. So there's a Sam here in Vladivostok, and he's going to embark through this uh, major shipyard, and he's going to go 1 to P8, 2 to P17, and 3 to P16, and I will put a sea lift marker next to him showing that he is in sea lift movement. All right. Second, now I'm just going to do regular uh, non-combat movement. In Uzbekistan here, let me make sure you can see Uzbekistan. Should be able to. <clears throat> Way up there in the top left corner of the screen. So these three MBTs start at a minor army base. One of the benefits of a minor army base is that it gives what's a strategic land movement bonus. And it, you get plus one to your movement if you start there. So they're going to go one to southern Kazakhstan, two to northern Kazakhstan, and three <coughs> to Novosibirsk. And stop there. These two MBTs in southern Kazakhstan are going to just use regular movement. One to northern Kazakhstan, two to Novosibirsk, and I'll chip the sculpt out of the one MBT and put those there. Then the mech in northern Kazakhstan and the artillery in northern Kazakhstan are also going to slide over here one to Novosibirsk. And I will once again chip out the artillery. Then uh, in Novosibirsk, the air cab and the attack helicopter um, start here at a major air base. That gives them a plus one movement. So th they are both, I'm going to pick them both up. They are both going to go 1 to Irkutsk, 2 to Yakutsk, and 3 to Magadan, where they will end their movement. Right, the fighter is also going to move to Magadan. 
one, two, three. Okay. In Yakuts, the CM is going to go one to Amur and two to Novosibirsk. From P4, the destroyer and the SSGN. The SSGN is a special unit in the ASW expansion that we're playing with. Um, they're going to go one to P9 and two to P8. And just for my playing partners here, I'm going to try to keep my surface vessels on my task force card and uh, I'm going to keep my subs here on the board. So that destroyer and SSGN both move to P8. And then all the diesel electric subs in P3 are also going to slide down here to P8. Like this. Okay. And that concludes my non-combat movement. And now let me just look and make sure everything feels right. And it does. So, uh, I start at 10 IPP. And I didn't spend anything. So you can see here, we're on turn one. I start at 10. By the way, this <laughs> very ugly <laughs> marker is going to be used to track my uh, base income plus wartime adjustments, which is used to calculate Soviet Far East Command VP. So I find it useful to have that also. So I'm at 10. So I'll come down here and grab another tenor. And I will throw that onto my dashboard, giving me 20 IPP to spend on 2.1. Now I'll hand things off to Captain G. Really looking forward to it, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.